OK, then I think we're ready to start. Thank you for joining in, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are, and welcome to our webinar on the 2023 round of PNST, the Postgraduate Study on Nanosatellite Technologies. So before we begin, um, a few things. First of all, please use the chat box to ask any questions. We will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end, but you don't have to wait until then. If you have any questions or comments, please put it in the chat box. Also, please answer our questionnaire that we will be putting in the chat box later on. My colleague Wenbin will be active on the chat, providing you with useful links, but also a link to our questionnaire. So please answer that before you leave. We would really like to hear your feedback on our webinars and events. And of course, not last but not least, um, if you are on social media, please use the hashtag access to space for all and PNST to help us promote this event. We're active on all, all those social media that you can see there. So Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram. So today's agenda looks like this. First of all, um, I will start off with an introduction to the Access to Space for All initiative and PNST. After that, I will give the floor to my colleague at QTech, the Kyushu Institute of Technology, for the introduction on QTech and the Space Engineering International course, Psych. After that, we will be having a great um, round of lightning presentations by current fellows and alumni. We have four student, uh, we have four people here, two current fellows that are in the PNC program right now, and then two alumni students, um, two alumni that have been students before and are now um, going, uh, are now back in their countries and really actively um, working in the space, um, space industry. And then after that, we will have a dedicated Q&A session. So with this, I'd like to um, first talk about the Access to Space for All initiative of UNUSA. So the goal of this initiative is to provide research and orbital opportunities for UN member states to access space and to ensure that the benefits of space are truly accessible to all. And we realize this pro by providing access to unique ground and space infrastructures and information that are usually too costly or non-accessible to developing countries. And through the initiative, you can find our core values on the left hand side. We first of all, we provide the possibility of developing hands on capabilities from A to Z. Um, you can see that PNST is a major part of providing this cap capability. Second, we provide cutting edge skills for jobs and other opportunities. Of course, PNSD is uh, really contributing to this as it provides um, skills for satellite development. Third, it fosters international cooperation between UN. Uh, the space frame partners and applying developing nations. Um, in the case of PNST, um, the applying students from the developing nations will be able to learn from Japan, which is a space faring nation, um, space faring nation, and will learn how to go through international environments and uh, experience international cooperation. And last but not least, um, our initiative has a strong impact to the country, regions, and young generations. Um, our initiative focuses on three of the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. The first one is number four, quality education. The second one is number eight, decent work and economic growth. And number nine, industry innovation and infrastructure. Um, the technology and infrastructure that the participating teams, and in this case, the participating applicants achieve and build, the applications coming from the projects that they develop, and of course, the partnerships they form all contribute to the SDGs. So in this slide, you can see the impact of the initiative. Participation in the initiative and the different programs under it has led to more partnerships, opportunities, media coverage, and development of new departments and universities. It not only raises interest in space, but it can generally lead to more investment in STI, science, technology, and innovation. So um, with this, I'd like to introduce our initiative um, in the way of it, how it's structured. So we are trying to expand our support and we have three components that form the initiative. So as you can see, each um, track um, has three components and the hands-on component is the actual hands-on and research opportunities. The tool component is something that will introduce how to use tools such as software and open platforms to effectively utilize the hands-on opportunities and the education component provides the theoretical foundation to participate in the hands-on component and use the tools under the tools component. And the components are structured to serve these three different tracks on the top you see um, in the three yellow uh, arrows. 
So we have the hypergravity and microgravity track that aims at building capacity for running experiments outside of Earth. The satellite development track aims at building capacity that enables development, deployment, and operation of satellites. And the space exploration track covers different aspects related to space exploration. And in this case, PNST is part of the education component of the satellite development track. So before going into details, how are developing small satellites relevant to you and your country? What benefits will it bring to you? Well, CubeSats offer a large variety of applications and developing a CubeSat can be the first step of a country in the acquisition of the skills and know-how needed to develop a space program. And of course, CubeSats are becoming more and more affordable to develop and represents an achievable entry point to space activities. And this is why we're focusing on satellite development and the satellite development track. So um, just to give you an overview of the hands-on uh, the initiative and the hands-on component, you can see the different opportunities that we have there. We have five opportunities under the hypergravity and microgravity hypergravity microgravity track, sorry, um, three under the satellite development track and one under space exploration. And we hope to expand by filling in the red donuts that um, you can see there that we don't have yet. Currently, we have two opportunities um, that are open or going to open soon. One is HyperJets and the hypergravity and microgravity track to conduct hypergravity experiments at ESA and drop tests, um, which is microgravity experiments at uh, Bremen will open soon. So please, um, yeah, uh, keep, uh, if you're interested in HyperJest, please take a look at our website. If you're interested in drop test, um, please keep checking our website. We will really be opening these soon. For the tools component, I have just uh, posted an example of the satellite development track. You can find different uh, tools and uh, systems, softwares that will help you in each of the different tracks. And we are uh, always interested in having more uh, information on this. So if you have anything, uh, please let us know as well. Um, the education component looks like this right now. We have many different web types of webinars, workshops, and fellowships that support the different tracks. And today we are going to focus on PNST, which is a fellowship under the satellite development track. So um, going into the details of PNST, our partner is Kyushu Institute of Technology with the support of the government of Japan, so the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology, MEXT. It was established in 2013, and this opportunity provides three students in the master's program, which is two years of duration, and three students in the doctoral program. And the students that are selected will be enrolled in QTEC Space Engineering and International course, um, which um, my colleague from QTEC will explain in detail later on. And this is an amazing program that provides hands-on extensive research opportunities in nanosatellite systems through the use of nanosatellite development and testing facilities available at QTEC. I will uh, explain a bit more in the next slide. And one thing I'd like to really emphasize here is that the selected people, the selected fellows, are expected to return to their home countries um, after they complete the PNSC program and contribute to um, space, um, to really accelerating and really um, working on space programs, space activities back in their country. So that is what we, um, UNUSA and QTEC, hope for, for the students that come out of this program. So um, why PNST? There might be many programs like this, but why PNST? So I'd like to emphasize two points. One is it is an amazing opportunity to study in an international environment at a leading university in the field of small satellites. So as I said earlier, it's a hands-on opportunity. You will be able to learn the whole life cycle of satellite development from the design, really thinking about the design, and then developing it, testing it, um, actually operating it when it's in space. So you will learn the whole life cycle of a satellite system. And from 2018, I'd really like to emphasize here that QTEC is the top of all academic operators. So you can see this um, report from Bryce Space Technology. Um, it's, um, I posted one on the 22 uh, document, but QTEC is one of the top universities that have been deploying small satellites. So they have an extensive amount of experience and uh, information on small satellite technology. 
And second of all, there is a massive support from Japan. It's very generous. Um, selected candidates will receive a scholarship of approximately uh, 14, uh, sorry, uh, 144,000 yen per month. So basically it's like an allowance for living to cover housing, food, local transportation and other stuff. Also, um, next we'll be uh, providing you an economy class um, air ticket between your country and Japan. So basically you can fly to and back from Japan um, by their support. And the fees for the school, so the matriculation, the tuition and entrance examinations will be paid by QTEC. So basically, you really don't have to have money at the moment. It's really there's a generous um, financial support from Japan. I'd also like to mention that we have many different countries that have participated in PNSD. You can see the different uh, fellows that we have selected in these past five years. And of course, we have more since we started the program in 2013. And they come from all different regions. And you can see some of the interview articles that we have done. Uh, maybe my um, colleague Wimben can put up the link later, but we have focused um, and we have talked to them. So please take a look at their uh, interview articles if you're interested. Just to go through the schedule, um, the application is open right now and it will close in January 9th next year. So you still have basically a few more months for um, putting together the documents. And then the selection will start from February going on until March. And then after that, if you're selected, you will need to finalize the research and study plan, um, take the entrance exam to QTEC, and then the fellowship will begin in October. So yeah, basically a year from now, if you apply and you pass, you will be a year from now. Yeah, you will be um, in QTEC by now. So um, how do you apply? Please, please, please take a look at our website and please read this page carefully. It has all the information you need about um, this year's round. It has all the application requirements, the information notes. Um, it, all the documents are there. You can learn about the procedure and selection process. So everything is written in this document in this page. And basically it has um, the frequent and uh, frequently asked questions, the FAQ there. So we do receive all the questions, but a lot of them can be answered at the FAQ. So please take a look at this website. Um, in the website, you would have to ha click this black triangle. So you have to click on that and then this will open up so you can find all the documents, all the information there on our website. So the deadline, as I said, is January 9th, 2023. Please take a look and please apply. This is an amazing opportunity that you should not miss out on. So with this, um, I'd like to go back to the agenda and introduce our colleague from the Kyushu Institute of Technology, um, Mr. Tetsuhito Fuse, who will give you more um, information about QTEC, the university itself, and the actual Space Engineering International course. So with that, I'd like to give the floor to Fuse-san. Okay, thank you, uh, Mori Hazuki. Um, okay. Let me uh, show my slides in just a moment. While Sisan is sharing, if you have any questions, please make sure to put it in the chat and please do not raise your hand. We won't be able to open the floor for uh, discussions, but please write it in the chat. OK, I see that um, the presentation is there, so please go ahead, Sisan. OK, thank you very much. OK, my name is uh, Tetsuhito Fuse. Uh, I'm belong to uh, a laboratory in satellite enterprise and in orbit experiment, Kyushu Institute of Technology. OK. Uh, firstly, I, today's my talk is mainly focused on a course uh, which is called Space Engineering International Course. Uh, all of these students today is presenting and the alumni uh, is uh, was belong to this uh, international course. Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, maybe you all of you can understand uh, Institute of Technology, but some of you are wondering what is Kyushu. Uh, Kyushu is uh, one of the uh, main islands uh, in Japan. There are four islands in uh, Japan. It consists of four uh, big islands, and the most southern part of uh, island is uh, Kyushu. And 
Kyushu Institute of Technology is a, a Japanese a national university, which is founded in uh, 1909. Uh, uh, yeah, history is more than 100 years. And our university is uh, focusing on engineering uh, department, but uh, we have uh, more than 4,000 undergraduate and more than 1,000 graduate students and 360 faculty members is working on this campus. Uh, one more introduction of Kyushu Institute of Technology. Uh, I call it a uh, QTech. Uh, maybe uh, some of students and alumni call our universities as QTech. Uh, we are very really proud of um, uh, about uh, hands-on and practical education. Uh, we don't, uh, of course, we have uh, our research course, but we are really uh, focusing on focuses on uh, our hands-on training. And uh, in this uh, training, uh, for example, there is a four uh, research centers. Uh, Produce uh, one of uh, biggest uh, research center is our laboratory, uh, laboratory green satellites enterprise. So there's another uh, center is also in our uh, institute like uh, environment energy or power electronics and neuromorphic AI and so on. And uh, from this slide, I will introduce our uh, center. Uh, our center has a, a, a very uh, cut, has a very cutting edge uh, test facilities in a university uh, center for nanosatellite testing. Uh, this center has a capable of doing all kinds of uh, space environment testing uh, up to uh, uh, 50 centimeter and uh, less than 50 kilogram. Maybe uh, some students introduce their experience uh, for this test center's hands-on training and actual testing for the satellites. Also, uh, we have a lot of heritage, uh, as Ms. Mori uh, introduced, we have a lot of uh, projects going on. And uh, SEIC students uh, join this uh, satellite project and they uh, can have uh, uh, experience uh, for a whole cycle of the satellite development to the operation. This is an example of satellite project. Now, currently we are going on three or four projects uh, developing. And uh, yeah, also we are uh, thinking to establish new satellite project idea as well. And yes, this is a Brystec uh, report, uh, as Ms. Mori explained. Uh, we have uh, world number one uh, sat CubeSat operator in the World Academic Institute. Okay, uh, what you can learn in the uh, Space Engineering International course uh, firstly, uh, was great list. Of course, uh, we can learn in research on the master or doctoral degrees, and also uh, we have a proud of uh, doing on the job training of such as space environment testing. And we also have a project based learning through the sub, uh, space project, which we have a uh, lot of heritage, and also all this lecture. Uh, done by in English. Uh, this is a record of, uh, out of April 2022. Uh, there are 26 nationalities uh, 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 belong to uh, students in SEIC. And you can see that there are 67 in total in this course, but only 25 is uh, Japanese. Others are all coming from uh, overseas, uh, from all over the world. This is a, a past uh, record of uh, 
graduated and current students. Uh, more than 120 foreign students are coming this uh, eight, nine years from 41 countries. You can see these students are coming from all over the world. And through this uh, experience, we got the uh, uh, Airbus Diversity of 2017. Okay, uh, this is a uh, okay uh, picture introducing our satellite project uh, heritage. As you can see, some are more satellite, but we are really these years we are really focusing on the one U to six U CubeSat. Uh, this six U CubeSat launched last year, uh, which we call Kitsune. This is a uh, first uh, Japanese 6U CubeSat launch Japanese institute, including uh, company, uh, industry. We are really uh, leading this CubeSat area in Japan. And one more introduction about our program. We are doing a BARS program, uh, which encouraging uh, uh, non space faring country to joining a, a space faring country with the development of CubeSat technology. Mm -hmm. uh, in the blue letter, uh, there are uh, uh, 11 countries written this from Bangladesh to Uganda. Uh, these countries is uh, uh, developed their original uh, first satellite with cooperation with uh, QTEC. Uh, this is a picture of the past five project members. As you can see, there are a lot of huge diversity of project members. And this satellite will be launched on 6th November in three days. OK, uh, maybe some of you don't know about space engineering, but uh, briefly uh, introducing about uh, CubeSat. This is a schematic view of a uh, uh, bird satellite. Uh, there are a lot of components, including in CubeSat. This technology is uh, basically the uh, same as a bigger satellite, like a solar panel to uh, uh, communication board, mission board, and control board computing, and battery uh, and structure. Uh, if you have uh, don't know about all of this, but you don't, you should not. Uh, uh, no, before entering QTIC, uh, like a structure, mechanical structure to electrical uh, power budget, a lot of uh, technology field is needed for satellite development. If you want to do something special, uh, maybe you can learn from satellite development. Okay, and we are also do, thinking a uh, uh, mission what CubeSat can do uh, in space. Uh, this is also a very important topic. Okay, this is a summary of the uh, introduction of uh, space engineering international course. Uh, th through these two or three years experience, you can be a professional of space engineering. Okay, and another thing is more important Japanese culture is very maybe uh, original. It's not uh, similar to other countries. You can have a, a very good experience uh, in Japanese culture uh, with a diverse, in a diverse uh, environment. Okay, uh, one more additional information. Uh, in a UN USA webpage, there is a space for all interview series number two is uh, released and our director of uh, this center professor Cho's interview and today's uh, one of the presenter about interviews also in this website please check it uh, after the website uh, webinar okay uh, that's all my presentation thank you thank you very much
you very much, Sisan, for the introduction to QTech and the psych um, the course. It's very interesting to see the different activities that you're doing. And for all the people that are here, these are the things that you will actually be able to work on at um, through PNST. So I hope you got a bit excited about the things. And now I'd like to introduce the four um, people that will really give you an insight to the actual experience that you will be gaining. So first, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, who is a current fellow from Cambodia, who is Poli Mai Im. And she will be giving you a 10 minute uh, presentation about her life in Kyushu and what she's learning there. I'll give you the floor, Poli Mai. Yeah, thank you, Marisa. And while Polly Mai is sharing her screen, thank you for all the questions that are coming in. I'll try to answer them in the chat as well, but also we will address them at the Q&A at the very end. Oh, can you see my presentation now? Yeah, it's in full screen. It looks perfect. OK, thank you. Uh, now let me enter. Uh, my name is Polly Mai in uh, laboratory of Land satellite interpre in and in orbit experiment in Kyushu Technology of Kyushu Institute of Technology in Kitakyushu Fukuoka, Japan. Uh, for my content today, I have a say a self introduction, fly vs a COVID nineteen PNST program, PNST coursework, satellite project, and life in Kitakyushu. Uh, my name is uh Ampoli Mai. I'm twenty three years old and I'm from uh, but the Mong Cambodia, and currently I'm um, st study in uh, Kita uh, Kyushu Institute of Technology and the uh, Space Engineering International course. And I have I graduated bachelor degree in 2021 at uh, Institute of Technology of Cambodia. Let's talk about the fly vs COVID. Um, my study point is uh, Phnom Penh International Airport in Cambodia. Uh, one of one country of uh, Southeast Asia. And during that COVID-19, I have a delay, delay for the departure date from mid-September until mid-November. And your uh, fly during COVID is, uh, is a bit very difficult. Like I have uh, prepared many documents before flight and I need to do PCR test before flight and after flight. And I have a uh, 15 day quarantine in Narita Hotel. And after that, I start uh, fly again from Tokyo to the Kitakusu Airport in uh, Fukuoka, Japan. Let's talk about uh, PNST program. How do I know PNST program? Uh, I know PNST program from my mentor of uh, UTITC Cube Satellite Project. Uh, the project is collaborated with uh, University of Tokyo and Institute of Technology of Cambodia, and I was accepted as a PNST candidate in 2021. Let's talk about the PNST coursework. Uh, as a PNST, we register as a student in Space Engineering International course, SEIC, and we have many interesting uh, course, uh, such as like Space Dynamic, Satellite Power System, Space System Engineering, Project-based learning (PBL), space environment testing workshop, space robotic, rocket propulsion, and the interesting one is Japanese for beginner. And for outside, out of these uh, interesting course, we have SEIC land our seminar. This seminar given by student under the SEIC program, and we have a guest lecture uh, given by uh, given when by invited professional in and outside of Japan. Uh, let's talk about the satellite project. Uh, in short, that you have a chance to join in the real satellite project. And currently, I'm a member of a Leopard project. And students will get many experience after attending, attending in satellite project. And we have a sharing knowledge between professor to student and between uh, senior to junior. And after that, we can gain the teamwork and communication skill. Out of this, uh, you can learn and operate the testing facility in the Center of Nano Satellite Testing, 
with vibration test, shock test, and thermal vacuum test. Uh, F, the image one is a thermal vacuum testing machine. Uh, the figure two is a shock testing machine. And the last one is a vibration testing machine. And you also have a chance to get the amateur radio license for the operator satellite. Let's move on to the interesting one, uh, life in Kitakshusu. You can travel around uh, Kitakshusu and another provincial in Japan. And uh, as the image show, the first one, uh, it is a five hour in Mikuni World Stadium in Kitakshusu. And this one is a uh, really nice. We have a lot of fireworks and we can enjoy the in uh, fireworks. And after that, we can go cycling to Wakamatsu Wine Well. And after that, we can see a beautiful sunset at there. And we also see the sunset at the Sakar Sarakura Yama Mountain. And you you can also go to the space labo to enjoy the video and the 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 expo for in the space labo has a many like space uh, interesting space object in there. After that, uh, we have a barbecue like in Shutai to meet the SEIC student or international student there, and we have SEIC lunch meeting. We have uh, we bought the bento and then have lunch together, and we can enjoy the spring season in the Kitakshusu with a uh, sara sakura flower, and also we can go to the Kukura Castle for see the castle in that. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attending. Thank you very much, Paul and mine, for the really interesting presentation. It's really a fun for us to learn about the different aspects of PNSD life. Um, if there's any questions of Paul and mine, please uh, write them in the chat as well. Um, I'll move on to all the speakers and then we'll have the Q&A at the end. So next, I'd like to invite our second speaker to the floor, who is Pema Zanglo. Um, she is a current fellow as well, and she is from Bhutan. So I'll give you the floor, Pema. Um, thank you. Let me share my screen. While Pema is uh, sharing her screen, thank you for the many questions. A lot of them can be answered um, when you look at the FAQ and in, when you look at the actual document, when you look at the actual website on our web page. So um, if, if it's about eligibility, please take a look at our website first, and I think um, it would really help you. OK, I see the screen is there. So um, Pema, please go ahead. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the PNST webinar. I would like to share with you all about the PNST opportunities and the exper my experience thus far with it. So these are so these are the content of my presentation, and I will be explaining each one of these in the following slides. So firstly, let me begin with my self introduction. So I'm known as Pema Zangmo, and I am from Bhutan. And currently, I am a second year master's student in Kyushu Institute of Technology and taking up a space engineering international course. My education background is in electronics and communication engineering, which I completed uh, from my home university, the College of Science and Technology. Uh, moving on to next, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, talk about the place where I come from, Bhutan. So Bhutan is also known as the land of thunder dragon. So referencing to its wild thunderstorms that strike the valleys from the peak of Himalayas. And it is a small country of a small population, just about 800,000 people living. And from this a global map, as you can see, Bhutan is sandwiched between two giant nations, uh, China in the north and India in the south. And some fun fact about Bhutan is Bhutan becomes the world's first carbon negative country, meaning our forest coverage absorbs a maximum or it absorbs more carbon dioxide than we usually emit uh, in our normal lives. And it is mandated in our constitution that um, uh, at all times we must preserve 60% of land under forest cover. 
And second one is to the outside world, we are known as the happiest country, and it is because we are more inclined toward the gross national happiness philosophy, which was coined by His Majesty, the fourth King of Bhutan. And clearly the head of the state remains king, whereby the executive power is vested in the cabinet, which is headed by the prime minister. And moving on to the next slide. So I would like to talk about Bhutan's journey into space. So it all began with His Majesty's vision to harness the space resources and technologies for the benefit of the country. So in order to develop the local human capacity in space field, our four Bhutanese engineers took part in BIRTH2 project, which was held in Kyushu Institute of Technology. So as a part of their master's program, they developed our first CubeSat Bhutan 1, and it was launched in uh, 2018. And Bhutan 1 was a very successful uh, mission, I would say, because it created awareness amongst Bhutanese people that, and it created uh, the notion that the benefit of the space technologies, and it caught attention of many Bhutanese young minds, including myself, and it was through them I got to know about the PNST fellowship and that's how I encouraged myself to apply for it and then I secured one. And we believe that for any space program to sustain in a country or to go it along, uh, to run it in a long way, uh, one must maintain consistency and also be willing to uh, keep working on space related activities and which is why Bhutan uh, put a step further and they started collaborating with the Indian Space Research Organizations to come up with a joint satellite project, a development project between Bhutan and India. So for that, Bhutan developed a secondary payload and the bus systems will be used by the Indian uh, ISROs. So Bhutan's second satellite is uh, the tentative date of its launch is by the end of this year. And all the activities, space-related activities, um, is carried out by the Division of Telecom and Space under the Ministry of Information and Communication. And for now, as of current, we can categorize our country as an emerging space-faring nation because we already have a small CubeSat launched and another one is underway. So before coming to Japan and prior to securing PNST a fellowship, I worked as a technical consultant in one of the companies and there I got to learn about the ground station operation and the installation of very small aperture terminal across the country. And by then I have been working as an assistant lecturer in one of the engineering colleges in Bhutan. And I also had the opportunity to be part of the initial phase of the secondary payload development for the joint satellite development project that happened between India and Bhutan. And moving forward to SCIC programs at QTech, I would like to admit that we are offered a great variety and range of uh, courses uh, such as space system engineering, embedded system design and power system design. Apart from these technical uh, modules, uh, we are also offered some special courses of which I have mentioned here, space law for new space actors. And it was a very good opportunity for us to learn about the space law and policies while we were pursuing the technical aspect of the space. And if you are in Japan, it is also uh, very important to make your life more convenient that you understand the basic of a Japanese language and QTech offers the Jap uh, language class as well. And further, environment testing workshop and project-based learning classes are also given equal importance because uh, we tend to learn more by doing hands-on and by materializing the uh, theoretical knowledge. And by project-based learning, uh, we mainly focus on engaging students in the satellite development project. And once you are a part of a satellite project, it provides you a great hands-on experience in satellite development, and it encourages peer learning. Like there is a great knowledge transfer uh, from the most experienced senior to the juniors who just started with their satellite project or the students who just started with their university life. So overall, it sort of create a very conducive environment for learning. 
And while you are working in a project, it surely ensure teamwork and over time your communication uh, skills would have also been improved. And currently I'm working in one of the satellite projects and there I am handling or looking after the electrical power system subsystems. We call it, it as EPS system. And, but having that being said, um, once you are a part of satellite project, and if you are working on, say for, for example, I'm working on EPS, you are not just limited to working on your subsystems, but it also gives you an opportunity or a platform to familiarize yourself with various subsystems and the missions that goes into making a complete a satellite. And while working on the project, it instill a sense of accountability and you also become more aware and uh, careful and responsible with the work that you're assigned with. And I would also like to say that it also offers you an opportunity to obtain a mature radio license, which is very much needed for you to be able to operate ground station. And these are some of the pictures that I have put up here. So my friends and I did some tests on our one of the satellite projects and these pictures were taken from there. Now, apart from academic life, I would like to mention that social life in QTEC is equally enriching and interesting because we get to meet different people from different walk of life. And it is really, it feels really good to be surrounded by diverse mind and personalities. And Kyushu Institute of Technology, the surrounding itself is very pristine and you have beautiful places where you can go on sightseeing with your friends. And you can see here a beautiful sunset, which is just a few distance away from the university. And if you are a person who loves sport, then you have an outdoor and indoor sport facilities. If you want to play badminton, tennis or basketball, you have good facilities. And one practice I really liked about the people here is like we oftentimes we tend to um, meet over a lunch and we try to connect each other and that's how you get to know each other in depth and you get the opportunity to exchange your culture, food, and you get to know about different, um, about the countries in general. And lastly, but not the least, um, if you want to commute without any delay from one place to another, then it is must and I recommend you learn bicycle because uh, it is very much required and it will make your life more comfortable and you can swiftly commute from one place to another. So overall, I would like to say that uh, Japan is a beautiful place and especially Kyushu Institute of Technology with its SCIC program, it surely provides you a space for growth. So this brings me to the end of my presentation and I truly believe that sky is the limit. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the really interesting presentation. It's also really nice to see that um, the development of space for Bhutan is really progressing along with um, QTEC, um, the PNST, and of course the BIRDS project. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, um, please make sure to put it in the chat box. I really recommend everyone to put questions to the students and the alumni to ask about their experiences as well, because of course, um, the eligibility criteria, we can answer them, but it's on the website. But if you want to learn about the actual experience or um, the difficulties they had or, you know, the successes, this is your chance to actually um, ask them directly. So if you have any questions, um, please make sure to put it there. OK, with this, I'd like to go to the next speaker who is an alumni of the PNST program. Um, I'd like to invite Cosmos Raymond Mutugi Kiruki. Um, he is a lecturer um, currently at the Department of Electrical and Information Engineering at the University of Nairobi in Kenya. So yeah, I give you the floor now, Cosmos. OK, uh, thank you, uh, Azuki-san. And uh, uh, hi. Uh, everyone, uh, this is uh, my presentation. I hope uh, it's uh, clear and I, I'm audible. Yeah, it looks perfect. Okay, yes, my name is uh, Motugi Kiruki, has uh, been introduced, and uh, I'm currently uh, working at the University of Nairobi, Kenya. And uh, this is the outline of uh, this presentation. 
uh, I'll, something about Kenya, then the pre-PNST experience, uh, PNST experience itself and life in Japan, and uh, the post-PNST uh, uh, experience. Um, Kenya is uh, definitely is, uh, in, in Africa, and uh, more specifically uh, in the East Africa region, uh, with a population of approximately uh, 55 million and uh, a GDP of uh, 110 billion uh, USD. Uh, this is um, uh, as per uh, 2021 statistics. And uh, what is Kenya famous for? Uh, if you take this uh, in Google, you'll find uh, quite a number of things. Uh, world's best safari destination. Uh, we have uh, some great tea, coffee, and uh, of course, uh, some long distance runners. But there are some interesting uh, tidbits uh, involving Kenya, which uh, uh, I, I, I find interesting. Uh, one, uh, of course, uh, uh, when we talk of the long distance runners, uh, we have uh, one of the icons, uh, Eliud Kipchoge. And uh, he is a great uh, human being because he is the first and uh, only uh, human so far uh, to run a marathon uh, under two, two hours. And uh, he happens to be to be a Kenyan. Uh, we are proud of. Then we also have uh, uh, this great man here. It depends with uh, whom you ask. To some he is great, to others he is not. But um, he also has uh, Kenyan roots. Uh, his his uh, his father was uh, born, raised, you know, a pure uh, Kenyan. Uh, that was his father, and uh, the son uh, went on to become. Uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, president. Then we also have another interesting uh, tidbit here, and um, this involves uh, the Queen Elizabeth II. And um, uh, you will find that in uh, in February 1952, when uh, uh, the the King of England, that was uh, King George, passed on, uh, Elizabeth was uh, visiting Kenya at that time. And uh, she had to to cut short her visit in Kenya and go back uh, to the UK uh, to commence, you know, the whole process of becoming a queen. So she became a queen uh, while visiting Kenya. Then uh, remaining in England, we have uh, the current uh, prime minister. His father uh, was born and uh, and raised uh, in Kenya. Uh, so what, what what is the moral of, of that presentation? Is uh, is to urge you that uh, make it a point uh, in your lifetime to pay a visit uh, to Kenya and uh, some great things uh, will come your way. Um, my, as a, my introduction, um, my education background is University of Nairobi. I did a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Electronics Engineering and graduated in 2014. Uh, thereafter, commenced my MSc Masters in the same uh, area and in the same department, uh, graduating in 2017. Um, this was under the supervision and uh, mentorship of one professor, uh, Mwangi Mbudia. And these are just uh, images of um, my the University of Nairobi, which is the oldest and largest uh, in Kenya, with a current uh, student population of over 40,000. Uh, Pre-PNST, um the my experience of the 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 commencement of this journey was under the first kenyan uh, university uh, nano satellite uh, project and this was a collaboration between the university of nairobi and the university of rome sapienza and uh, the principal investigators uh, in this project were professor mondi mbudia and uh, professor uh, fabio santoni and uh, this project was key to Kenya uh, as, you know, as the first Kenyan university, but also it was uh, the first uh, beneficiary of the Japanese uh, Kibo Cube uh, launch opportunity. And uh, I had um, a chance to, to work in this project, although uh, a very, uh, I will say, you know, from now my experience in QTEC, a very minor uh, experience uh, in this project, but it definitely uh, opened uh, the, the doors and the opportunity to progress and, uh, and join uh, a Kyushu Institute of Technology. 
And that happened uh, later in the year of 2017 when um, I was awarded the PNST PhD uh, fellowship. And um, this uh, was under the Space Engineering International course, as has been presented by the current students there. Uh, I was based in the Embedded Systems Lab um, under Professor uh, Kenichi Asami. And my research area was on uh, FPGA-based uh, inference accelerators. This is in the field of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And of course, this is in addition to the whole spectrum of uh, satellite uh, projects. And uh, these photos, uh, they show my arrival in uh, in Japan, Fukuoka Airport. That was uh, in September of 2017. Uh, <coughs> shortly after I arrived, <coughs> uh, sorry for that, uh, I arrived at my uh, apartment. Uh, this, you know, this apartment here, uh, where I stayed for the for the three and a half years uh, that I was in Japan. And uh, as was presented by uh, uh, Morrison, you know, they give you an allowance, uh, you know, which caters for for your life there. You know, so I was able to to stay around here uh, comfortably. And uh, this shows the welcome party uh, in the embedded systems lab some international students and uh, Japanese uh, students. Um, so um, specifically on the satellite uh, satellite uh, projects that, uh, you know, um, are the, the gist of this opportunity, uh, I had the, the chance to work on one, uh, the Tenko uh, satellite, uh, and I was in the electrical power uh, subsystem team. And uh, these are some of the um, you know, the images uh, during that uh, time. I was also had the opportunity to work uh, in the Kitsune uh, satellite project. And uh, in this one, I was uh, uh, greatly involved in the mobile uh, crowd station uh, project. Uh, this, this is, you know, now on the crowd station part. And uh, I will say that this really is uh, the key um, aspects and the key a characteristic of this uh, PNST program, the hands-on uh, experience. Uh, I think I cannot um, uh, overemphasize the impact uh, it has on uh, on students, especially on the students like ourselves uh, coming from, uh, we'll, we'll see the developing countries, and therefore to be exposed to this uh, immense uh, technology and uh, and opportunity to to interact with systems to you know world class um, engineering uh, uh, projects um, it's a huge huge uh, opportunity and experience which really uh, cannot be overemphasized which uh, these photos do not really uh, you know uh, do justice to that uh, experience you can only uh, get it. Uh, when you arrive uh, in uh, in QTEC. Um, the, the other academic uh, opportunities in, uh, in in QTEC, and uh, for in my case as a PhD student, you know, there are requirements, conferences, uh, publication of, um, of journal papers and all that. Um, I also had the chance to participate in the U UNICEF Global uh, Mission Idea Contest uh, uh, in 2018. This, this is essentially just coming up with some mission ideas and, uh, you know, uh, through the experience in QTEC and, uh, and, you know, and what you have learned there, you know, you are able to structure your, your mission idea. And uh, I emerged, or that idea emerged the uh, uh, second place, that was uh, November 2018. Um, then uh, in 2019, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to attend uh, the IIC conference in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, where uh, I had a presentation, a paper presentation. And um, these were uh, my colleagues or, uh, the, you know, some of the other students from QTEC. So it was a huge uh, delegation from uh, from QTEC. And uh, this was a photo, uh, was a dinner uh, in, uh, uh, in Washington, D.C., with some of the alumni from uh, QTEC, as well as uh, some other uh, eminent persons that in one way or another had some interaction uh, with QTEC, um, you know. Um, then um, the, uh, the life uh, in Japan, um, 
three and a half years, you know, cannot be summarized in a, in a slide, uh, but I just selected a few. Um, I, I was interested to, to see the other side of Japan. You know, we know Japan with all these um, technology, gadgets, and electronics. I wanted to see the what I was a bit used to, you know, some farming. And uh, this was some visit to uh, Oita in uh, Kyushu, uh, where they do some uh, tea, uh, tea farming, uh, you know, and I did compare with how we do it uh, here in Kenya, and I saw we are doing very well uh, here in Kenya. Um, then uh, the other I would want to highlight, of course, there is uh, the, the sports part. Uh, we, we had some lively uh, footballing uh, sessions uh, in QTEC with, with the international students and uh, Japanese students as well. Um, some other visits uh, here was uh, in Tokyo, uh, Tokyo Sky Tree. Uh, there is also this uh, picture here, bottom left. This is uh, Dr. Koichi uh, Wakata, if I get the name right. And um, he's a Japanese uh, astronaut working uh, under JAXA. And um, he was the first uh, Japanese a commander in the International Space uh, Station. Um, uh, then the, these two other pictures are now on my departure after the three and a half years. I left there in February of uh, last year. And uh, here, uh, you know, this was still in the COVID uh, times. Well, uh, it, we are still in, in, in those times, but uh, it was a bit uh, heavy during this time. This is uh, one of the colleagues there, uh, Ibukun, uh, from Nigeria. Uh, we graduated with him, but uh, is currently based uh, in Japan. Um, now there is the, the post uh, PNST experience, and uh, as has been presented by Azuki uh, Mori, that uh, you know, there is the expectation that the experience you gain uh, in QTEC, uh, you, know, you, you transfer it uh, back to your country. And uh, when I came back, I joined the Department of uh, Electrical and uh, Information Engineering at the University of Nairobi. And uh, I've been involved in uh, some uh, satellite uh, activities here. One of them was as a project manager in uh, the uh, NASPON nanosatellite project. This, this really was not a flight, uh, you know, a flight uh, satellite. Uh, this is just uh, some model to um, for, I would say, for capacity building purposes uh, locally. And this was sponsored by the Kenya Space uh, Agency. And uh, this, uh, this is uh, myself. And uh, these were, were some of the undergraduate students that uh, I was working with uh, in that project. And this is uh, Professor uh, Mwangin Budia, who was the principal investigator uh, of this project. And uh, this project was was in a way also a competition because there were five uh, public uh, universities in Kenya that were involved in this. And uh, the, this team that I was leading, uh, we emerged uh, the top uh, winners uh, in that particular uh, project sponsored by the Kenya Space Agency. And this was the, the award ceremony uh, with the team uh, in November of last year. Uh, currently, uh, I'm an assistant principal investigator for another uh, project. This is a 3U uh, nanosatellite project called the, the Tafiti uh, project, also sponsored by the Kenya Space Agency. And uh, we, we have the, the expectation that uh, we, we shall go all the way to, to a flight model. And this is now, uh, it involves four uh, universities and uh, the University of Nairobi is the leading uh, partner in this uh, project. Uh, then there is this uh, in, uh, photo here, but this was uh, in June of this year during the Kenya Space Expo and uh, conference uh, uh, 2022. Um, and here I was uh, uh, um, a panelist, a panelist uh, moderator for one of the sessions there. And um, this, this photo was actually uh, taken by Azuki Mori. Uh, so uh, it has found its way here. Um, and uh, the, the experience, uh, because I think this is important, uh, you know, what you bring back to the country, yes, there is the satellite, um, you know, technical um, 
uh, aspects, but there is, you know, you, when you go out there, you make you, the global exposure and experience, um, the networking, those uh, come in handy. You know, when you go back to, to your country, you are able to even make uh, consultations with the alumni network and the uh, QTEC does something uh, very, something else that is, uh, is very helpful that uh, we have as, uh, alumni uh, kind of meetings um, every month and therefore we are able to, to maintain that uh, networking. And uh, through those exposure and uh, experience, when you come back to your country, when I came back to, to Kenya, um, I, I found my impact, uh, you know, I'm proud of the, the impact that I have had in the, in the one year that I've been around. And, uh, you know, the transfer of that experience, the transfer of knowledge, I think is, is the aim of, the, of this PNST program. And I, I can attest that uh, when you pass through QTEC, then and you go back to your country, your impact uh, shall surely be felt. Um, so this uh, brings me to the end of my presentation and uh, I wish you all the best uh, in your endeavors to pursue this field. Uh, thank you. Thank you very thank much you. Cosmos for sharing us your experience and of course um, what you're doing right now at the University of Nairobi. It's also really amazing to see um, the different opportunities that you've been able to achieve actually um, with the UNICEF um, Mission Idea Contest and also the grant from um, KSA, the Kenya Space Agency. So it's also, I believe, the passion that you have, which is really working out. So congratulations on that. Okay, um, I'd like to move on to our last speaker, who is um, Abhas Maski, who is also an alumni, and he is a founder of Antarikja Pratistan Nepal. Sorry, I might not have pronounced it correctly, but yeah, um, he will explain it more in detail. So I'll give you the floor now, Abhas. You're muted. Um, can yeah. you hear me now? All yeah, right. perfect. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. And uh, I am Abbas Maske, I'm from Nepal. And uh, I think most of the things that I wanted to say here has already been said by my previous speakers, but I'll try to be um, more personal about my particular experience at QTEC. Um, I actually studied in Korea first. Uh, I did my undergraduate and master's uh, under Professor Jung in Suk, uh, worked on the SNUSAT projects, which was a part of Kari and also QB50. And then I went on to work on a startup, uh, Angel Swing Drone Startup, which was uh, around 2016-17. And I heard about this PNST program through my professor, uh, and uh, I immediately applied. And um, in 2017, I got into the program and uh, I did my PhD under Professor Mengu Cho. I also got to lead BIRDS3 satellite project, uh, which built the first satellite for Nepal and uh, also worked on the initial stages of Kitsune that uh, Kiruki was mentioning before. And uh, right now, after returning back, I founded uh, my own nonprofit. It's called Antirich Pratistan Nepal. It's basically called Space Foundation, if you literally translate it. So one of the interesting aspects of the PNST program is that it's taught in English. I think this is something that's really important in Asian universities. Even if the classes are in English, they're not really taught in English. But in case of QTEC, they are really taught in English, which is great. And also uh, with uh, aerospace engineering, you don't really have satellite related courses. So you might have rocket technology, you have, might have propulsion, you might have all these other technology courses, but with QTEC, they're really honed into satellites, which uh, I really liked. And uh, the exposure is massive. You get to talk to JAXA experts, industry experts, they take classes, and also you have special lectures from people who've built, uh, who actually made the CubeSat standard, and also you get to talk to astronauts, you get to learn about the space law, you get to see how other people are building space startups. And um, you also have uh, these kind of book and research seminars happening every week. Uh, so you are up to date and also you're learning about uh, some theoretical parts of satellite development. 
But most importantly, what you have to do is learn and then sort of apply that through project based learning. And uh, that's something that uh, Fuse san and Mori san also mentioned. It's uh, hands-on satellite projects. So you're not only working on one particular project, you'll be more working on multiple projects. And if not, you'll be working on multiple satellites. So what you will do is you build end-to-end, -end, you'll be uh, looking into the requirements from stakeholders. You will be involved with uh, creating dialogues with the government. You'll be building and testing this, your first designs. You'll finalize the design and then launch it. You'll coordinate frequency, build ground stations in your country as well and then eventually operate them uh, and learn how to analyze that data. So um, it's a complete end-to-end -end learning. Uh, and I think um, this is really important to know because if you go to other satellite projects, you either join in the middle or you join later. Uh, and with QTech, what I saw was they try to involve you from the beginning. And uh, also what you get to learn is uh, from your um, uh, seniors and also from your juniors, obviously. So lessons that were previously learned from other projects uh, is basically passed on to you. So with research activities, what I've noticed now is uh, there is a change slowly moving towards artificial intelligence, uh, edge computing, edge inter inference. Uh, and uh, that's towards uh, satellite related machine learning, deep learning models, uh, which is uh, really nice to see. And also we, we see quite a lot of uh, uh, research being done to improve the existing satellite bus technology, to find ways to open source it and maintain those systems, and also focus on in-house system design and improvement, which I think is a critical aspect if you want to come back and learn and build all the systems in your country as well. And also we have we had research seminars. So we had to present our research every Wednesday. Uh, we had to be involved in writing journals uh, and conference papers. So your writing skills and communication skills improve. And also you had to be involved in international national conference and uh, you got to uh, do a lot of networking as well. So um, besides that, uh, one thing to really notice here is the center of, for nano satellite testing. I mean, uh, just for context, we used to fly from Korea to QTEC to test our satellites. Uh, having those facilities, like, I, I mean, walking two minutes to the particular uh, testing center was uh, mind boggling for me because now you had access to all these thermal vacuum chamber, vibration shaker, sh shock, anechoic chamber, and clean rooms, and also you had square chambers and LEO testing facilities. So, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I cannot even explain how, uh, how important this is to have access and free access to all these testing facilities, which we are really struggling right now in Nepal. And importantly, building connections. So what happens is there are multiple generation of satellite teams that are involved and they're supporting and helping each other. There's a very tight knit community. And also you had world class faculty. I think this is what Kiruki mentioned. And really this there is world class teachers, professors helping you out, which is really nice. And uh, like Professor Maida said, I mean, it, it's not actually what you know, it's eventually who you know going to be important. So I think uh, having 20, 30 different countries involved, uh, building their first satellites, uh, I think this is going to be extremely key uh, now and in the future. So uh, what I'm leveraging is those alumni network now when I'm working back at home. Life outside campus, um, uh, from Seoul to Kitakyushu was a bit of a step down, but still you had Kokura, Mojiko, Simonoseki areas, and you had also uh, Fukuoka, which was uh, very cl uh, close and was, was the largest city in Kyushu Island. And Kyushu is very famous for onsen, which had quite a missile out, which basically means hot bath. And uh, you had all these hot bath springs around, you had gym facilities, 24 hour convenience stores, shopping areas and restaurants, um, um, and uh, plenty of housing opportunities and options in and around the school. So post PNST, basically you are asked to take leadership role. You uh, have to come back to your country and basically build up the infrastructure from ground up. You have to learn to work alongside the government and uh, work with them rather than against them. 
You also have to lead satellite projects and replicate the work you did in QTech. You have to invest in building human resource. Uh, so when you come back, the first thing you have to try to do is uh, maybe um, get a group of young people and then start working with them. And you have to learn how to raise funds and lobby for funds and organize conferences, conduct outreach, do local research as well. And importantly, we have been learning how to cultivate relationships nationally and internationally. And uh, again, I would like to uh, emphasize on this that the Almo network has been the biggest asset for, for me and for Nepal so far. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alpas, for the presentation. It's, yeah, all the presenters have really talked about it, but the network that you gain, the people that you get to know, the people you get access to is really amazing um, through PNST. Okay, now I'd like to move on to Q&A time. There's a few questions um, in the chat, but I'd like to um, start answering them as well. If you have any more questions, please make sure to put it in the chat right now. And I'd also like to uh, mention that this is being recorded, so we will put up the uh, recording on our website after the webinar. The presentation is already on the website, so you can uh, take a look at them as well. Okay, um, first of all, um, there's so many questions um, for... Uh, QTAC actually, so I'd like to give the floor to Fusesan. Maybe um, Fusesan, can you explain about um, what kind of background the students need? Of course, um, there's many questions. I'm studying IT, I'm studying this. So is, um, if you can explain about the background and what you actually check, what you really look at when you're selecting the students. So if you can kind of explain about that part, that would be great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this kind of question is uh, uh, maybe really interesting for you. Basically, uh, space engineering uh, is needed for electrical or mechanical technology. And uh, most of students is coming uh, graduated from uh, electrical or mechanical uh, department. But of course, uh, we are not only uh, limited to these two uh, a delicate field, but also uh, we are still open. Uh, if you have uh, experience uh, in uh, uh, in your research or in your uh, study uh, related to uh, mechanical or electrical, uh, we are open to uh, up get the up applying uh, to uh, PNSD. And uh, for example, uh, I my first major was uh, fit, applied physics. And, but uh, I became a space engineer uh, because uh, my uh, research is uh, experimental uh, physics, uh, like uh, a nuclear uh, de development for uh, uh, radiation detection uh, measurement devices. And uh, my experience is uh, uh, beneficial uh, to be a space engineering. Uh, that's why uh, my career, uh, my major was uh, okay to be a, a space engineer. So uh, maybe uh, if you are uh, graduated to electrical or mechanical, uh, it's easy to um, uh, answer. But if you uh, uh, developed uh, some specific uh, courses, just ask a question to a PNSD uh, QTIC uh, mailing list, uh, I will answer you are eligible to apply it or not. Thank you, Susan. Um, basically, I'd also like to emphasize that the motivation letter is very important for PNST. So we, although maybe, um, as Susan said, maybe it's not the specific engineering that you technically need, but if you have the passion, if there's a motivation, and if there is a reason that you really want to work um, on satellites, a reason that you really want to go through this um, PNST course, um, please explain that to us in your um, motivation letter. And it's really to really give us an idea of what you will be able to do in the course. So you don't have to tell us about your dreams or what you thought when you were a kid or whatever. Of course, that's important. Maybe that's something that you started off with, but we want to be able to envision you being a student in the course. So please tell us what you intend to do, what you intend to do when you go back to your country. So you can give us a vision of what you would, you know, be able to provide during the PNSD opportunity. And um, there were some questions about um, students asking about 
um, if they could join QTEC, the Space Engineering International course outside of PNST. So maybe if you can briefly explain about how to apply for the Space Engineering International course if you're not a PNST student. Okay, uh, yes, of course we, our uh, institute is open for everyone uh, to just normal applying uh, uh, process like uh, if you want to join next October, uh, our application process will start next uh, April, May. Uh, and still we have a, uh, you have a time to prepare for application. Uh, please check at, uh, uh, at QTEC admission process for home page, web page. Uh, there are uh, information. Uh, now we just close the uh, application process uh, to enroll in next April, but uh, after, yeah, maybe in six months, uh, we will start next uh, application process from uh, next 2023 October. Okay, thank you. So if you're interested in QTEC and the Space Engineering International course, please take a look at their website. Um, I would like to emphasize that for PNST, um, as I've said, there's um, uh, different benefits. Of course, there's the financial support that you would get from the government. Um, although the experience might be the same, there are specific benefits of going through PNST. But yes, um, to be honest, it is a very competitive um, process. So um, if you have um, other ideas, if you have the funding to go through this um, other avenue, please uh, take a look at that as well. OK, thank you very much. Um, now I'd like to invite the four um, students and alumni to ask about ask a bit more about them. Um, I, I see a lot of um, questions about the application form and also to the four students um, and alumni. Can you give us a tip or, or um, advice to students who are interested in applying to the um, PNST program? what you did, you know, what you wrote that you thought was effective or what you should have done, or if you have any advice um, for the application process. Um, maybe I can start with uh, Pema. Um, hello, hello, Morrison. Thank you very much for the question. And to the interested students who really want to uh, secure PNST fellowship, I would really urge you to uh, make a proper checklist of what you need, the documents. It was very crucial because I had the, uh, I had uh, the, what do you say, incident whereby my fellow Bhutanese wanted to try for the scholarship or the fellowship. And because she could not uh, provide one document, she could not uh, take part in the fellowship competition or in, uh, something like that. So it is very important that first of all, we need to have a proper checklist and also uh, the motivation, like Morrison mentioned, is very important. The references that you uh, give, like we are, we are required to provide three references and it is very much important that you put a very um, convincing one, persuasive one. Of course, uh, the fact must be mentioned, not the exaggerated one, of course. And apart from that, um, I think in my case, I mainly focused on the research uh, topic that I wanted to do. And I took time to formulate uh, my research uh, report and what I want, I really want to do uh, in this uh, course and also like the motivation behind it. So that was the journey that I had uh, taken up to secure the PNST fellowship. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Pema. I think that's wonderful advice. Um, also, Polymai, can you give us some advice tips to the people that are applying? Yes, if you consider to apply the PNST scholarship, as Pema mentioned, please uh, take the note list. Uh, this one is important because we know the process for the apply, and then we know how, uh, which one it takes long for apply. Like, for example, for me, the nomination form is uh, take a lot, a bit long for apply to take it. So that's one is uh, really neat and check the deadline of application because uh, in the website there has two deadline application. One is uh, online application and another one is uh, 
uh, document submission. And one more, I, I saw many people ask about the final year. Uh, for the final year of engineering or of bachelor degree, you also apply. If you graduate, uh, you will graduate on uh, September 2023. Uh, that's all for my side. Okay, thank you, Polyman. Yes, um, as I've been answering in the chat box as well, um, if you are graduating, um, not by January, but afterwards, um, if you have a document that proves that you will be able to graduate, um, that would be something um, that you would need to send us. Okay, um, I'd like to ask the same question to Abhas. Um, any advice, tips on the application, not only the process, but maybe the motivation or um, yeah, the mentality that you should have for PNST. So, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. so um, once I got into QTEC, I realized some of the things that they're looking into is um, basically if you have project-based experience before, um, most likely some kind of hands-on experience with some of the systems that are related to QTEC. It doesn't have to be satellites. In my case, it was satellites. But uh, if it's closed systems, then you can show uh, that in your CV or in your personal essays as well. And uh, some of the things that they, they look for is if you can work in a team or not, uh, if you have certain leadership qualities, um, if you can at the same time maintain your GPAs, if you, uh, I mean, that's very critical because you have to do both. And also uh, a critical aspect is um, if you are really going to return back to your country or not. I think those are one of the things that many of the things that uh, I think uh, QTEC is going to look into the application and um, determine whether uh, you are a perfect fit for them or not. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect advice. Um, I'd like to send out the same question to Cosmos as well. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, uh, Morrison. The the comments by the other presenters, uh, I, I think they have really captured uh, uh, what I would want to say. Uh, but just to emphasize on uh, some of the things I think uh, they look at, because uh, you know I've not been on the other side to know exactly. Uh, what it is they look at but uh, in the documentations um, as Abbas has said uh, one you need to express um, you know to be very clear on uh, what you have worked on uh, previously it may or may not be uh, on satellites uh, because for example there are some there are some countries uh, yes developing countries but they have some kind of uh, space activities and therefore it will serve you well if you know in your own, um, uh, you know, out of your own initiative, you tried to to get involved uh, in your country's uh, space activities. How, uh, you know, however, um, you know, small or big uh, they are, you know, that kind of initiative communicates, um, you know, in not so many words, but uh, in a very great way uh, to QTEC of your uh, inspiration as well as your focus uh, in the field. Then, of course, there is the aspect of the research uh, area that you want to work on. Um, and QTEC, as a, you know, it, it has different labs. Yes, everything is uh, in this course. It is under the Space Engineering International course. But within it, uh, there are some uh, different labs. And uh, in my specific case, um, I was very keen on working on, uh, you know, these uh, electronic uh, boards. Uh, being able to, you know, to build and to, to program some electronic boards, you know, the area of embedded systems. And therefore, in my application, I made it uh, very clear of my interest, in addition to the, to the satellite field, uh, my interest in embedded systems. And that's why I was placed uh, in the embedded systems lab, uh, where um, I worked under Professor uh, Kenichi. Um, then, uh, and of course, you also need to to to, to show your intention and uh, the impact you wish to to make once you you complete your studies in Japan, you know, and that is coming back to your home country, and uh, you know, and trying to uh, to push this uh, field forward uh, in your country. 
Uh, then there was there is the question of those who have still who are still in uh, in, in in school and uh, they will be graduating uh, sometime in future after the deadline of application. Uh, my case was very similar. Uh, I was to graduate. I graduated in uh, in September of uh, 2017, and I was going to Japan uh, in the same month uh, of September. So it means that by the time I was applying, um, you know, I didn't have my my graduation certificate. But of course, uh, QTEC uh, will take in uh, some very uh, official and strong communication uh, or letter from your current university that this is your status, this is your progress, and you are on your way uh, to graduating on this particular day. And therefore, if uh, they are convinced that um, you know that uh, you will actually graduate by that time, they will give you the uh, the fellowship or the scholarship. Um, so for those who will be graduating at least before uh, September of the uh, twenty of the uh, next year, I, I do believe, as has been said, that you are eligible for application. Of course, with a very strong uh, recommendation and communication uh, from your current university. Uh, thank you, uh, Morissa. Thank you very much to all the four presenters of their advice and tips for the application. I think these four people have actually gone through the process. So yeah, I think it has a lot of uh, meaning. Um, next, I'd like to ask Fusesan. I think this is a good question and maybe we can use it as a wrap up question, but uh, what kind of students are you looking for? So what kind of students is the PNST program looking for, especially on the side of QTech? If you can summarize that in uh, maybe one minute, that would be great. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a very uh, important question. Uh, firstly, I uh, joined the QTIC uh, notice uh, to to see the students at QTIC. Uh, these students are very uh, challenging. Has a budget very challenging minded because uh, most of people are coming from a non space faring countries. It means uh, uh, there are not much many space industries or there is no space industry in their home country, but they want to uh, study uh, space technology. It's a very uh, uh, challenging also. I, I'm was very surprising this uh, very challenge-minded, uh, and, and also uh, simultaneously, uh, I really uh, respect for their uh, challenge spirit and to uh, develop their career by themselves. Uh, and I really want to invite these uh, students to be in a PNSD program. So. Uh, if you uh, in your country uh, there are no many many uh, space industry or uh, there are not many chances to get a, a job in a space field, but if you want to uh, do or if you want to open your uh, world by yourself, uh, please uh, apply for a PNST. Uh, I really uh, uh, looking forward to seeing these kind of students next year. Okay, <laughs> thank you. This is uh, my uh, last comment. Thank you very much, Fusisan. Um, yes, uh, you, Nusa, um, we fully agree with what uh, Fusisan said, and also. Um, we understand that there's a lot of documents that you need to fill out, and this is because this program is supported by the Japanese government and to get the funding, um, there are many documents that you need to fill out. So we know this is a hard process, but the good side is you still have a few months. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us at UNUSA. So um, the email is there, UNUSA access to space at UN.org. Um, if you have any questions, um, please reach out to us. But I'd like to emphasize again and again, please read the whole website. If you click on the uh, the triangles, it 
opens another form and it shows you um, a lot more information. And of course, the FAQ, the frequently asked questions are there because it's really frequently asked. So please make sure to check the whole website, all the documents. And then if you still have questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us. And of course, if you're interested in QTech and the engineering course there, please um, reach out to QTech as well. But as you can see, there are amazing alumni in this course and um, please feel free to reach out to them as well. And I think they'll be happy to answer your questions and they have the actual experience. Um, but as yeah, as everyone was saying, um, this is a really life changing course. Um, we are really happy to see the many alumni that have really um, been doing amazing things back in their countries, and we hope to see more students um, following their steps. So the deadline is the 9th of January. Um, we look forward to receiving many, many applications from all of you. And uh, yeah, as I said, um, the presentations are already on the website. The recordings will be uploaded later. So if you have any friends or colleagues that weren't able to join, um, please share the link with them, and then they will be able to see everything as well. So yeah, it's already um, 2.30 and Vienna time, so I'd like to close the meeting now. Thank you very much. Please answer our questionnaire form before you leave. Um, and yeah, with that, I'd like to close the webinar. Thank you to all our speakers. Um, thank you to QTech, our partner, who's been really engaged in this um, educational program. And yeah, thank you to um, everyone that was here. So have a nice day wherever you are and make sure to apply by the deadline. Thank you. Bye, everyone.